Tonight we're talking about France banning the burqa and I'm interested in how some other Australians who aren't Muslim feel about the idea of a ban on the burqa. Colin, what do you think? Well, I think it really subjugates women totally and completely, although I understand there's a couple of women here who, by choice, when they're older, now 17, 18, 28, whatever it was, they chose to do that themselves. I completely understand that. That's a different thing. Or, of course, there are converts um, who choose to do that as well. But overall, you know there's uh, girls in the age of six years of age, they're already having to put on the hijab, uh, by the, definitely by the time they're nine years of age, when they have their menses. OK, so, so do you want a ban? I'm, I'm just trying oh, to yes. get to the centre yes. of this issue. You do? Yes. You want a ban here, in Australia? Yes. All right. Uh, Janine, what about you? What do you think? Oh, um, I agree with Sabelle. I think it's like a woman's choice what they do. And, um, like, it's, it's a piece of clothing. If it's not offensive, why can't we wear it? Mm. OK. Corey... Bernardi, uh, you've been calling for a ban in Australia quite strongly. Why? Um, I believe it's a security issue and also there's a cultural attachment to it. Firstly, we have already double standards operating in our society. If someone with a niqab or a burqa walks into a bank, they're not challenged. Uh, if they walk into a petrol station, they're not challenged. If people go in with a balaclava on, they are challenged, or a, or a motorcycle helmet, they're challenged to reveal their identity. But Well, this is interesting because we spoke to the Bankers Association about this mm. and they, they say the reason people are challenged about a helmet is that if, you know, if they are committing an offence of some kind, they're more difficult for the police to overpower. They don't see a need to ban the burqa. Well, the reason we have closed circuit television cameras and we have a range of other identif facial identification things is so that we can identify people when they do commit uh, crimes and when they commit problems. Right around the world, we're not seeing that many women actually who wear the burqa commit crimes. We're seeing men dress up in burqas and commit crimes, which is why in they Jordan, that, which is why in Jordan they've, 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 they've mm. reduced it or they said they're not allowed to uh, have it in, uh, in public areas. I just believe that from a security perspective and in the interests of our community, we need to have the same expectations of identification available for all Australians. Mm. Now, how much evidence do you have, though, that it's presenting a real problem in terms of security? It's, you, it's, you've, described it as, you've described it as the preferred disguise for bandits and ne'er-do-wells. What's it's the evidence I, I for that? said it's emerging as the preferred disguise of that because in, in societies and communities where the facial veil is becoming acceptable, it is the easiest and the least alarming of uh, disguises for people to wear. You can go to the UK and you can look at a myriad of robberies, same in the, in the United States. You can go, as I said, to Jordan where there's one crime committed by someone wearing a burqa or a facial veil every four days. You can look in Tunisia, you can look in Italy, you can look in France and Belgium and you can look in Quebec where they've all said this is a problem, a security problem. Australia has this wonderful opportunity where we've only had a couple of instances one a robbery in Sydney and one where a, a policeman had a, an alarming range of claims, false claims made against him because he asked a lady to remove her veil. All right, all right. I, I want to pursue the security angle a little bit. Jacques Mia, was security a concern in France when you made this decision or was the, the main thing behind the decision the, the other issues you've raised earlier? Security is one element, but this is not the most important because, of, of course, there, is a, there was a debate to say we ban it in the, in the public services, for instance, because we need to check who is coming. But I think it goes deeper. It, you know, the fundamental uh, uh, question which is at stake is what kind of society do we want? Do we, do, do we want to live in ghettos, that means in separate communities, or do we live in a, as a citizens in a free country? And as a citizens for, uh, for, uh, in a free country, we need to have equal footing between men and women. I will accept you know, the veil when men are going to, to, to carry it, to have it. So this is not the case. This and is a statute of women which is at stake. Because behind the veil, you have also many others Problem. Like, do those uh, ladies want to shake hands with men? Do they want to, in separate uh, swimming pool? Do they want to go to mixed schools? Do they want to uh, eat next to somebody who is eating pork? This is the principles which are at stake. All right, what that... kind of society do we want? OK, Tariq, it, what's your response to, to that? to say something about this? Because yeah. I... Yes, I'm keen to hear what you have to say. Yes. 
Yes. Look, I, I think that once again, uh, these are false arguments because the, the, the reality is that the, 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 the new generations of Muslims, second, third, and, and onward generations in France and elsewhere in, in, in the West, they are more visible because they are not living in ghettos. So the point is for us to abide by some principles. And the principles in Australia as well as in France are that uh, the, uh, there, is, there are laws that we are respecting and all the Muslims, the, 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 the great majority of the Muslims are abiding by the law. And now the burqa or the niqab or anything which is covering the face, once again, I think that from within the Islamic communities, we need to have a discussion about this and to go through a pedagogical uh, trend to get a better understanding of Islam. I don't think it's a prescription, but I understand that some women, as we have on your, uh, in your show, are saying, this is my choice. And I think that you have to respect this. This is the starting point. You abide by the law and you respect the free choice. And there is no one who can come in the uh, secular state to tell the Muslims this is Islamic or not and this is cultural or not. This is for the Muslims to say it. So Yelling. the one who is talking for the Muslims saying it's cultural, this is not of his business. It's something which is coming from within the community. Mm. Now we abide by the law and then we try to get something which is there is no imposition. You cannot impose onto someone the way he has or she has to dress or not to dress. And this is the starting point. The point here is that look at what Jack Miyar was saying. He starts with the, the headscarf and then he go to the burqa and then he speak about shaking hands and then he speak about eating and then he speak about the, anything which has to do with personal uh, and private affairs. So in fact, from this, the problem that he has is the new presence of Muslims and he's using the burqa to attack no. something else. So this is a pretext no. and I think that this is very dangerous for no. a realistic society and our no. future. Okay, can I have a quick response from you to that, Jacques? Very simple. You know, uh, first you know of all, it's true, uh, the secular <laughs> law is the one which is implemented in France. Secondly, if a priest is going to tool the bells at 4 o'clock in the morning, it will be forbidden to do it. If a Sikh uh, doesn't want to have an no one is when asking he's, uh, this. driving a motorcycle, no he will be forced to do it. So please, please, Mitarik, don't what are you go, talking about? You know, no and, one is uh, asking this. argument again. I'm sorry to say to you that this shocks the, you know, the deep soul of all nation and Western nation in the world, and you cannot avoid it. This is not a question of personal no, no, choice. No, no, especially, it's a especially in France. This is something. Common these, living are, together. these are discussions that are mainly in France. Okay, I want to get back to the security question no, because that's very that. much because that's very much what's driving well. the debate and here you know from, from you, Corey Bernardi. And I'm going to have to stop our guests over in Doha and France for a moment um, because I wanted to get a response from you, Amina, to this issue of security. How willing are you to remove your veil in court, for example, at an airport, in a bank, in those sorts of places? Sorry, what did you say up the back there? Well, how about when the cop pulls you over on the side of the road for a random breath test and says, actually, we want to just verify your ID right here, right now? No, in front of, in front of um, females, I am more than happy to uh, um, show my face. And say I was held up on the street by a male officer, I'd, be like, I'd tell him, let's go to the office, and in front of a female, I will show my face. So security is not an excuse at all. And on the point of um, and airports, how many years have we been catching airplanes um, with no need to see our faces? All we need to do to withdraw large amounts of money from the bank is an ATM card and a PIN number. We okay. need to show our faces. Okay, Amina, I'd, uh, probably backtracking just a bit, mm. but for, for the benefit of some people watching this, yeah. why don't you want to remove your veil and show your face to a man? Just why should I? I, I'm but listen. why specifically not a man? Why, why would you do it for a woman and not a man? Because this is not my opinion, it's not my choice. Allah Almighty uh, has ordained that we cover our faces in front of the men and not the women. Um, so right now I'm covering only because there are men around. If it was full of women, I would have um, uncovered. No problem at all. Can I just attack the point of confronting? Who decides it's confronting? You or me? Like No, wait, 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 wait. I might find something confronting, you might find something confronting, he might find something confronting. Are we going to go and uh, uh, treat each one of them as a criminal and find them? I might find one who's, who's a gothic or an atheist or a gay person. I might find each one of these people confronting. Am I going to go and propose a bill to find them and treat them like a criminal? Who decides? Okay, Corey, Corey Bernardi, response? Well, let's go back to this. This is a mask 
plain and simple. When our society gets to a point where we think it's OK for people in their day-to-day -day life to wear a mask, cut themselves off from their fellow Australians and go about their business completely without any, any comment or, or adverse reaction, I think we've lost the battle for what is Australian cultural identity. We are OK, Sabelle, Katie, you are cutting yeah. us from society. OK, Sabelle, Sabel, a response from you to yeah, that? I mean, I totally agree with your concern regarding security. However, there are ways around it um, uh, without f putting a full ban to the vodka. There are ways around it. For identification purposes, at the airports, for passport, licence, anything that you need to identify my face for, I have no objection. And neither will many Muslim women have no uh, objection. And in regards to your, your question about if you get pulled over on the side, I've been pulled over. And I had no objection whatsoever. Uh, so with a male, with a male, with a male, would you, with a male, would you a female? At that time, if a female is available, you'd ask for it. I will yeah. ask for a female. If a female is not available, I will settle for the male because for identification purposes, for security um, purposes. Coming back to what you said, walking into a bank. Do you think if I want to commit a felony, if I want to commit a crime? Do you think banning of the burqa is going to stop me from committing the crime? Of course not. It's been of course not. So what are you going to do? Are you going to ban all items that, uh, that lead to theft and robbery? Let's, are you going to ban the balaclava? Let's not jump from Are you where going we to ban the, the, point, the, no, what is the, it, point the bandana? The point is, if I walk into a bank with a balaclava on or a motorcycle helmet, there is instant alarm in the bank and they're wary. If, if you walk in there with your, with your niqab or your face they veil, they, they do off, not... There is no alarm. And as soon as that is the case, where people can walk around without revealing their facial identity outside of a professional circumstance, we are losing what are the things, one of the things that really really binds this society together. It is compromising our security. I have a question for you. If you're a Member of Parliament, mm -hmm. would you remove your veil in order to vote? Because that's how we identify who is actually voting. If you need to identify me prior to me voting, I have no objection. But you'd have to walk in there and you'd have to sit there without your, without your veil on. That's in front fine. Of, I will do it. This is the point. That's so fine. This is the point. So you're prepared to do it when it's required. Of course. Right? And yet the rest of the time you say, no, it's, it's a religious requirement. Why is it this is what I want to do. It's called choice. That's well, right. Thank you yeah, very but, much. But if your I'm choice is compromising store, our society. If I'm going shopping, what's the reason for, for me to Security. be honest? All right. Let's, 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 talk, let's, let's start talking. Very, very what security? Excuse me, just I want to know what security we are talking about here. The security of our country. Yeah. What yeah. security of your the, country? The ability to identify anywhere. people. And like bank, you identify people. Station. How many people? They make a huge problem to the security of Australia, mm -hmm. and they are like you. We can identify. Wearing exactly how you are. We can identify. What you are identifying? What you are identifying? They can see my face on TV. So they what? can't see this lady. So this many faces like oh. your face. I'd like to do that. Right. Okay, we have to disappear. Well, we, you... we all look the same, do we? Yeah, you look the same. Yeah. All right, we have to go to a break, everyone. We are going to keep this going. Coming up, we're going to talk about whether the ban is about something bigger than women's rights and security. Uh, that's next on Insight.